Okay, here we go. Hot end. I purchased this specifically to rip to pieces just to show you how these things go together and to kind of follow up on my post about Capricorn and cleaning the hot end out and all that jazz. So I'm going to rip this one apart. Let's just get rid of this uh, tie wrap. I'm going to rip this one apart and show you how it how it all fits together and kind of explain in video a bit more um, what I was trying to say in the post. When you're working on this on your printer never grip on the side where the cable is. This cable is extremely delicate, it's extremely easy to damage. If you put pliers on here you will kill it. So only if you're going to use pliers, I suggest you use some of these parallel jaw pliers. By far the best thing is an adjustable wrench. And put the adjustable wrench on so that it's touching the front and back faces. Like so. So it's nowhere near that cable. You don't want to damage that thermistor cable. Um, so in the printer you would hold the heat block with the adjustable wrench and then use your spanner or whatever you're going to use to take the thing apart so that you're only putting force against what you're holding it with and you're not causing any twisting or bending of the bracket that's got the strain gauge in. So the first thing I'm going to do here is back out the nozzle but before I do you can see that there's a gap between the heat block and the nozzle. That gap is very important. That has to be there. If you don't have a gap there you're going to have le you're going to get leakages. There has to be that gap. I'll tell you how to resolve it if you don't have a gap as we get further in. So ordinarily you would need to heat this obviously to take the nozzle out but this is a brand new one and I know this is going to come out. So as soon as this nozzle is backed out and loose, and not even fully out, depending on your particular hot end, the block may come loose. That's perfectly normal. That's fine. Don't worry about it if the block, if once you take the nozzle out, the block moves. The nozzle is what actually holds the block in place. So don't worry about that movement. So that's the nozzle out. You can see inside, hopefully, if this is focused, the Bowden tube. So what I'm going to do is take out, take the block off completely by spinning the, the heat sink. That's screwing the heat brake out of the heat block. I'm not sure whether, let me see if I can get this, I think you can just see that the Bowden tube sticks very slightly out of the end of the heat, block, heat break. Um, it's very difficult for me to see whether this is focused because I'm blind as a bat. But it is very slightly sticking out the end of the heat, heat break. That enables the nozzle to seal onto the tube push it in a bit more there you can see that's obviously way too far but the Bowden tube has to come past the end of the the, the heat break when you're assembling this thing so that the, when you screw the nozzle in it presses on that tube and then pushes it and squeezes it and then tightens up onto the heat break and locks everything in place then that Bowden tube is pressed extremely hard onto the back of the nozzle and it seals everything. The plastic can't get out anywhere. If the Bowden tube is... I don't know whether I'll even be able to show this because... 
I'm blind as a bat and I can't tell whether it's focused. But if the Bowden tube is like that, I think you can see it's inside the heat break. The nozzle will still tighten onto here, no problem, and it'll lock the heat, bl heat block in place, no problem. But the plastic will fill that little gap, and these threads are directly inside the heat block and extremely hot. That plastic in that little gap at the end of the Bowden tube will eventually cook and turn black and crispy. Then sooner or later it's going to break away from where it is, go into the nozzle and cause a blockage. You then take the nozzle off and you clean it out and you get all the gunk out and you put the nozzle back in and it works again for a couple of hours and then it blocks again because it's constantly breaking away the black plastic from inside this gap and blocking your nozzle. The only way to stop it is to fit this Bowden tube correctly which is what we're going to come to shortly. So if you do have this repeated blockage problem you need to clean out the hot end. So to do that you don't need to remove the the heat block or any of that business. This is still in your printer. Um, you take the nozzle out, you take the coupler out of the top. This is still in your printer. You get your Bowden tube and you shove it down through and out of the bottom, out of the nozzle hole. If there's any bits of burnt plastic in there, bits of it will get stuck to the end of the Bowden tube and you'll see it. So you wipe all that off good and clean. Pull the Bowden tube back out, push it back through again and keep doing that until it constantly comes out clean. If there's any sign of any debris on that tube when it comes out, in the tiniest speck on the end of that tube when it comes out, you need to keep wiping it off, clean it off, pull it out, push it back down and keep doing that until you can repeatedly push the tube down and back up and down and back up and nothing at all comes out. It's completely clean. That gets rid of all the black and crispy bits that's inside there at the... the end of the heat break. Then you put a new nozzle back in. When you come to fit the Bowden tube you need to put the nozzle in and tighten it. Obviously you can't do it like this because it'll be 240 degrees and burn you. But you put you tighten the put the nozzle in until it's till it's just tight. You don't have to wang it up like a lorry wheel nut just till it's just tight. Then back the nozzle out one full turn. Now the nozzle is backed out one full turn. You refit the coupler on the top of your heat sink. You get your Bowden tube. Let's see if we're going to focus, focus and push your Bowden tube all the way in firmly. If you've got the little clips, the coupler clips, put a clip in now to lock that in place. I've got some somewhere but I can't find them so I'll just, I've put a clip in there, you can just imagine it. Then, while it's still heated, you tighten the nozzle back up. Just going to make this as sure this is still square, and it is. So then you put your adjustable wrench back on your heat block. With it heated to 240, you give it a nice nip, and then now the nozzle has gone in that one thread. You can see there's still a gap between the heat block and the nozzle because the nozzle is tight onto the heat break it's not tightened onto the heat block it's tightened onto the end of the heat break 
so it squashed that little tiny bit of tube that was sticking out the end of the heat break, it squashed that in, pressed it right onto the back of the nozzle and then the nozzle is tightened right up onto the end of the heat break and sealed everything completely and locked everything back in place. So now the, the heat sink and the heat block are all fully locked in place, they can't move, there's nowhere for filament to get out, it's not going to leak out of here because it's tightened up onto the heat break. It's not going to leak out of here because of the same reason. It's all locked together. And the tube is making sure that the only path for the filament, the only place that the filament can go, is down the middle of the tube and straight into the nozzle. There's nowhere else for it to come out. It can't ever get to these threads and it can't ever get to those threads in there. The tube is sealed right onto the back of the nozzle and the only path for the filament to go is straight into the nozzle and straight through the nozzle and out of that hole. It's the only way out. It cannot leak anywhere. So that's how you, you correctly assemble this thing. Um, I'm not sure why this um, idea of um, if you get a blockage you just go out and buy a new a new complete new hot end. I know they're cheap but it's a complete waste of, of money and it's a complete waste of resources. It's a five minute job to clean these things out and reassemble them correctly and it's every bit as good as a new one. Um, there's really nothing at all to go wrong with these things other than the thermistor and the heater cartridge. So that's it. If there's any questions feel free to ask. Um, hopefully I'll at some point get some kind of camera that's autofocus can actually keep track of things. I'm having to do this with manual focus because the autofocus takes the best part of a week to find out what you're looking at. Um, so it's quite difficult especially since as my eyesight's quite bad but hopefully you were able to see and understand what I was getting at. So there you go, that's it. Hot end dismantling and reassembling. Bye-bye.